Mic check one two, mic check one two. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. This is episode number 155, Uno Cinco Cinco. Hola a todos. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. You're doing fine. I'm doing amazing. Um, it's the middle of the week now. We're slowly creeping through the rest of the week and we're slowly but surely going to get to the day that matters for most of you flipping losers right all you living for the weekend mofos are going to be super glad when you wake up tomorrow and it's thursday and you wake up the next day and it's friday and you wake up the next day and it's saturday right that's what you're living for even though you shouldn't be doing that i know you're slowly but surely grinding your way into the weekend hoping 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 you can survive until you have that sweet 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 alcoholic beverage clasp inside your hand and you're ready to sip 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 with your friends or people that you pretend are your friends because you're afraid of being alone i can see you i know where you are you can hear me anyway welcome back to the show hope you guys are well and you're you know in a good place i'm an i'm in an amazing place actually i'm in probably one of the best places i've been in a long time um even when someone says that and they're not in a good place there's no way of really judging right is there like if i say that and uh i don't know the reality is that i don't know um i've broke i don't know i've lost an arm or whatever right or somebody stole my money you'd have no way of knowing that would you so you have to kind of go you have to kind of like you know trust my word and why would you even trust me? Eh? You don't know me. Why would you trust me? Any of you did know me. Why would you trust me anyway? It's fucking weird. Isn't it? People say those kind of things. But then I guess sometimes if, if you're overly saying, oh, what well, this has been one of the best years of my life. In some respects, it could be, it wouldn't be too far stretched or too much of a far fetched thing for you to come to the conclusion that maybe that person's doing that to kind of you know, convince themselves as opposed to convince the person that they're talking to, right? Oh, how are you? Great, 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 great. No one that's really great says great that many times, right? Like, if you're great, you just, you know, you just, you just ambivalent about it. You're like, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty cool actually. You leave it at that, and everyone can say, oh, you are actually in a good place, right? There's no, uh, there's no need to you to kind of, you know, uh, repeat yourself seven times in them twelve seconds, right? Um, but hey, what do I know? What do I know? There's things I don't know in this world. And one of those things is how to feign happiness. Because generally, I'm quite an even-killed kind of person, I think, for the most part. I think that's one of the things that I've kind of been battling against, right? You Sometimes you can be too even-killed. You can you can come across a little bit too uh, diplomatic. I've had that kind of um, leveled at me. That sometimes I can always see the pluses and... Uh, I can always see the pluses in a negative situation where sometimes can rub people up the wrong way and it can come across a little bit fake which i understand which i'm i'm nowhere near anything to do with fake right i don't think that's something i practice because you know i don't generally talk to as many people as the fake people do right because if you're fake by nature the reason why you're fake is because you talk to everybody and you try and spin them the same lies right uh, i don't necessarily talk to that many people so i can't necessarily be fake because i'm generally on my own for the most part but i understand where that sentiments come from um it's unlikely that i'm going to change that's one thing to be kind of like honest about but what is likely is that i will take that kind of advice on board and i will make it um my mission to not always interject and provide my positive kind of spin on things i think sometimes even the word saying the word spin um that can maybe that that can maybe describe a lot what people are hearing because when i'm saying it, it i'm not intending it to be received that way but sometimes you know you can't help it's, you can't help how people interpret your words, but you also have to take responsibility. If some people interpret your words wrong, you have to kind of sometimes think, okay, cool, maybe I did do something a little bit too fucked up. I'm, I apologize for it. Because the opposite of not doing that is being like a Piers Morgan, where you say whatever the fuck you want, you say wild shit, um, or what, what, which you don't deem wild. Let me, let me, let me shoot him some bell. I think Piers Morgan doesn't think he's saying crazy stuff. I think he just says what he feels is right to him. People interpret it as crazy shit. And because he's kind of played himself as this caricature, like, you know, villain, this kind of society villain, he kind of like doubles down on it, right? And kind of like, you know, continues riding that wave. And what's even more funny than Piers Morgan stuff, after all that stuff with Madeleine McCann and the tapping of the voicemail and all that stuff, right? It's really funny. It's really weird to see that he still kind of survived. I think we're in a different climate, I think, in the UK than we're in the US. I think if, if, he, was, if he was a US... If this happened in the US, right, if a child went missing and it kind of transpired that the paper that he was under or he that he was kind of like, you know, overseeing um, encouraged their journalists to tap into the voicemails 
of I don't know missing kids' parents or their mobile phones to find out what happened. I'm pretty sure he would never see a light of day again, right? But I think in the UK we have a different kind of you know there's something I don't know what it is why we interpret it different. Maybe it's because when it happened he kind of up sticks and went to the US for a bit and did the CLN thing and then he came back again. So I'm not too sure whether that little break kind of like made him outside out of mind, but it's quite an interesting conundrum, right? It's quite an interesting case study. Like how did Piers Morgan survive um, the fall of the mirror? Like how did he kind of come out of it unscathed for the most part? Um, And now he's kind of turned into this weird kind of conservative talking head who says crazy stuff and always gets annoyed when women do stuff on <laughs> or stuff. Whenever a woman comes out and says womany stuff, he's always the first to kind of come out and say, oh, people are going soft, snowflakes. He's, he's a fucking interesting guy, man. I don't really get that riled up about anything he says to be honest. He's just an interesting guy. And it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. He's an Arsenal fan, right? If any, if, if ever there was a, an embodiment of why people think Arsenal fans are absolute donuts, right? It, it's Pierce Morgan, isn't it? Come on, man. You can't get more... It's just it's a bizarre it's a bizarre world we live in, man. Bizarre, bizarre world we live in. But hey, hey, ho, there we go. Um, here we are, man. Episode number one five five. Feeling good, feeling fresh. I've got loads of topics to kind of rattle through, and loads of things have happened in pop culture that I want to give my opinion on and spin on because you know we live these we live in a day of the internet. The internet has allowed us a platform to display our work, to show how amazing our lives are, and also for us to talk shit. For us to talk aimless, mindless, droning shit about topics that have absolutely nothing to do with us. That's what the internet has empowered us to do, right? All this talk of connectivity and all this blah, 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 digital landscape, sod off. People want to show where they're going. They want to show what they bought. They want to show their circle of friends. Um, they want to showcase the work they're doing. They want to talk shit. That is essentially what it is. And they want to laugh at celebrities when they make a mistake, right? That's essentially what our internet has turned into now right that's the platform isn't it like let's laugh at someone's misfortune right (laughs) and uh share our avocado on toast but here we are here the hell we are so number one topic not even a topic just something i kind of was thinking about just um earlier on today if i told you that um now if i told you or if not if i told you it seems as if from my own kind of like novice uh beginner um outside perspective it seems like the fashion world has really really felt um the departure or the lack of phoebe philo in the fashion week calendar i think people have i kind of really underestimated just how much of an influence she had on fashion overall i'm gonna i'm not gonna say the business because i think the business side of it is where i think phoebe maybe kind of uh didn't um really meet the standards that maybe celine wanted or whatever i don't know um, I'm not sure the kind of inner workings of it. It didn't seem like she wanted to bring the brand into the 21st century, right? There was no online store. You had to buy most of the things from their own uh, branded boutiques all around the world, but obviously only in the big metropolitan cities, which was probably a bit of a pain for some of the women that wanted to buy into the brand. But in terms of just fashion, in terms of what she was able to do in how she was able to communicate the message across about this is what the modern woman wants and the fact that she was probably one of the only designers probably apart from maybe Musha Prada who's able to appeal to women from such a wide um, variety of ages socioeconomic backgrounds and race and whatever it may be right she was kind of like the every woman's brand which is fucking weird right because women are so picky when it comes to clothes, when it comes to collections, when it comes to who they're, who's talking to them, how they're talking to them, women are probably the most discerning uh, fashion customers there is out there, right? And they're very trend focused, right? As opposed to men, men are not very trend um, lean, leaning for the most part, right? Brands like men's brands can kind of get away with having uh, three or four or ten, let's say, uh, staple looks that they kind of continually kind of recycle and kind of apply a little twist on. Men are quite low in that regard, but women are quite fickle, right? So if something isn't hitting, they'll jump ship straight away. But Phoebe Filer was so good that she was able to hold on to those women throughout different stages of their lives, right? Different stages of their kind of, you know, um, um, I don't know, uh, fashion journey and still be able to provide and speak to them no matter what, no matter how her life changed, right? She came into it uh, with only a certain amount, number of kids. Um, then I think she had a couple of kids. And I think she had one kid as towards the end of her collection being launched. She took some breaks. So, I mean, she was kind of changing as, as, as she was at the helm of Celine. She was kind of growing into being like, a, uh, from going to being like an older lady, no, not older lady, to being a young woman, to being a young mother. 
Do you know what I mean? And she was able to kind of transition there and also be able to provide women with the wardrobe that they want to feel empowered, to feel sexy, to feel sleek, to feel comfortable in the workplace. Just really amazing clothing, all in all, right? And it seems like there's a real void at the moment in the marketplace for someone to fill in that gap. Like, who's going to fill that gap of Celine? Who's going to provide women with those clothes that make them feel like they can get shit done and they can go to the club and they can hang out with their girlfriends and they can, you know, uh, break some necks down the street. How's Who's going to do that? And it seems like, you know, everyone's kind of clamoring to kind of get that spot. You've got Victoria Beckham doing some good shit at the moment. But I kind of spotted this random brand, um, part of the Stockholm uh, Fashion Week. This is for 4019. I've never heard of them before in my life. Don't really follow any of the brands on Stockholm Fashion Week. But it just stuck out to me, just kind of thinking about the influence that Selena's had or Phoebe Fowler's had in the fashion scheme overall, right? Because you look at it even from high street brands, right? High street brands are probably feeling the loss of Celine even more, I mean, for Phoebe Fowler, even more than anyone else, right? And um, because she was probably one of the most copied brands out there, especially for people like uh, Zara and H&M, they will take their clothing and kind of like dilute it down. Even Cos was doing it for, for a certain period, although they moved on to Color and, and a few other people afterwards. But... She, she occupies such an interesting space, right, where a high street brand could take that um, those codes from, from Phoebe Fowler and apply it to their collection in store. And then the, the, the woman from the general public who has no idea who Phoebe Fowler is could see that jacket, could see that dress, could see those trousers and immediately want it. Right, even if it wasn't something that was featured or something, something that just they just be like, oh wow, this looks amazing, this looks different. This was something I could wear with a blaze, something I could wear with a small top or with a vest top, whatever. Do you know what I mean like they knew exactly what that was, and that was that. That's the beauty I think of it. Like she appealed to fashionistas and to the general public, so something that's really hard to do. And I saw this brand called uh, House of Dagmar. Um, I'm assuming it's a, a Scandinavian based brand. And then it immediately started, got me thinking that that is kind of like the quintessential. If you if you start, if you had to tell me the quintessential uh, Phoebe Fowler customer, it would be the Scandinavian woman, right? The Scandinavian woman that that works within the uh, creative design, fashion, art field. The ones that are curators, the ones that are um, editors, the ones that work in merchandising, in logistics, the ones that go to work in fucking heels every day, right? Who get dressed up, who kind of like can make the effort to put on actual outfits, right? Kind of an extension of the uh, the Vogue Paris crew. Do you remember when everyone was obsessed with like Emmanuel Alt and Geraldine Saglio, whatever her name is, right? There was that extension of that, like the kind of a really girly version of those kind of girls like a lot of makeup a lot of hair always done um no smoking of the cigarettes of course because they're more health conscious and they drink shakes and they probably um, have a peloton bike in their house or whatever but this this collection called the house of dagmar kind of reminded me a little bit of it of like old school phoebe philo i'm not gonna not say whether or not it's good or not but just in terms of like the influence of what she had in the overall um fashion landscape i really like that blue coat i think again all the stuff that celine phoebe philo did with with celine could easily be put into a, a men's wardrobe like so 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 easily if anything what Hadi Semen was doing at Saint Laurent was kind of a great um, mirror a great kind of um, uh, accompaniment uh, to what Celine was doing, right so the Saint Laurent man and the Phoebe Fowler Celine woman could could be going out like they could be together they could be a couple they could be a, a partnership they could be uh, colleagues that work in the same department you could easily see that happening and this kind of collection from the house of Dagmar looks really nice I like her. I, I love the jackets um, the silhouettes obviously are quite the same those are those kind of the slits on the front of the pants it was what, uh, what Phoebe Fowler was doing towards the end of her time at Celine um, Louis Vuitton have obviously done it under Virgil he's done it a few times I think I've seen Telfar do the same sort of stuff um the heels of course look amazing the boots probably don't work that great with the outfit that i've seen here kind of like the stack Jaden sort of boots um but overall i love it and obviously like the, the the fact that the collection's like in a showroom with some pieces of art around it kind of again lends itself to kind of a uh, celine who kind of did a load phoebe fowler who did loads of kind of work with contemporary artists installations and and really caught invites and all that sort of stuff kind of like um what similar to what JD Evans is doing at Lueve, but you can definitely see the influence of um, Celine has had on the fashion on the fashion um, landscape. But again, I'm interested to see who's going to be the person or what brand is going to be able to kind of take that market um, by the scruff of the neck, or is it going to be a thing where women are going to just going to weigh it out and see what Phoebe Fano does next? Because I'm really interested to see what she does next. Because I really do hope that she comes back with her own namesake brand. Because um, I kind of view the whole talented designers always um, go into a house the same way that I view 
big major label artist not setting an example for the young artists and not going independent right if you're drake you probably don't need to sign with a label you can probably get away with doing a distribution deal right with one of the big labels to make sure your stuff gets where it needs to get to but you can probably do everything in-house right for the most part apart from just pressing the machine button right you don't need to use them and i think by and large i think artists now in the music industry are getting caught up in 360 deals precisely because of that reason right most of them are coming into the game with no money anyway so you understand it with the younger artists so when someone's going to give you a one million dollar advance even though that advance isn't money in your pocket it's a loan they see it as a chance to kind of come up immediately whereas the independent grind is a bit more of a slow burn right you got to build a buzz you have to build a following you have to sell tickets you've got to make merch everything comes out of your own pocket you've got to put up money first right similar to what um Dame Dash would say, right? You got to put up the money, put the money, put the money to be the boss. But not everyone wants to do that. So people just want to plug in and play, right? And be just kind of, you know, part of the overall kind of content plan of a record label. But I think in fashion, it's the same thing. I think if more fashion designers, especially the big ones, the talented ones, took the chance or took the kind of, you know, the mold of like maybe not showing as often, right? Not having maybe a resort collection or pre fall collection in the calendar, maybe showing only spring and autumn or winter, whatever it may be, right? And then, and then doing it all kind of themselves without having a big kind of label, a big, not something one of the big conglomerates, maybe doing a partnership similar to what um Rick Owens did, right? Where he sold a bit of his brand. I think, I'm not too sure what the company is, but you know that, that kind of thing where you sell it to a, a, a bit of a, another investment company they invest some cash in you they take a little chunk of ownership and then you're able to operate in still like a small mold the same same like uh, rick owens i think a lot of com a lot of brands coming up now would follow that mold and of course if you have phoebe Fowler, you have to kind of imagine like she's been working in the industry for like a long time i don't want to count anyone's pockets but i'm sure she's not hurting for money right even just being a consultant even if she's like um, shadow designing H&M collections, which I'm sure it's happened because I've heard stories of big um, photographers doing the campaigns for H&M and all that malarkey and just not wanting their name to be attributed to it, right? But they do that in order to kind of, you know, um, make sure the lights are on and then they'll do like, you know, uh, for the love projects, like working with ID or Arena Home for free or for a reduced price because that's something you do for the love. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if someone like a Phoebe Fallo is designing silently in the background for cause or something, whatever it may be. But I would love to see her come back with her own thing, like just on her, on her own, like her own namesake brand. I think that would be so important. I think people would absolutely love it. Um, and again, I think maybe in between that time, before she ends up doing that, it's really a big, it's going to be a big task for whoever's out there to kind of like take that mantle and kind of fill the spot and say, okay, cool. Women who want that look, I've got you. So far, no one's kind of hit out of the park just yet. I mentioned Victoria Beckham. She's doing some good stuff, but it seems like that that space is still kind of unoccupied. No one's kind of claimed it. So it was interesting to see what happens in the next few seasons. I know Phoebe Fowler's doing her first kind of public appearance since she left Celine, right? Doing some sort of panel talk show, panel discussion, I think, coming up very soon. So I'm interested to see what she says there. I'm sure she won't say nothing too controversial because I'm sure when you leave those kind of places and you're given... I'm not sure. Did she leave or she gets sacked officially? I'm not too sure. I think she left, right? I think she kind of called it quits because she's always kind of been a bit um, different in that regard, right? She's always kind of um, prioritized her family life um, and her kind of, you know, uh, mental health over uh, the rigmarole of fashion. She's kind of always taking breaks and in between and stuff. So I wouldn't be surprised if she actually decided, you know what, I'm done. So um, if that is true and if it kind of coincided with the fact that LVMH wanted to kind of really ramp up the revenue um, that... Um, Celine was generating so they went to you know the probably the, the best person to do it Heidi Simone um that would make sense but I'd be interested to see what she says in the in the thing panel anyway I'm sh like I said maybe it'll be a bit of a gag order there in terms of if she's got a, a kind of a golden handshake she might be able to say too much but I really hope she comes back and does her own namesake label because people would work people would cop that in a heartbeat if she came back and just did her own because essentially like she did she did the same thing with Celine right she just kind of you know plugged in her um her aesthetic into a big house and kind of you know presented it on the runway but she could easily do that with her own name um that would be fucking cool if that was possible but hey ho there we go that was just a random thing i saw on the interwebs i thought i would share you know um where's celine gonna go now man oh my god what's next on the list here of things i wanted to talk about um oh new york fashion week is on right now at the moment um a couple of interesting collections that i saw that i thought were interesting number one being uh paloma spain which i wasn't really too familiar with um of course it's by uh, a, a designer called alejandro gomez paloma right um showing in new york 
the the collection is very interesting loads of dresses on guys which i'm really which i'm always a fan of i'm a big fan of just that i'm a big fan of kind of just you know not pushing the envelope but i'm a bit i'm a big fan of the theatrics of fashion when it comes to well in general right and i think sometimes men's fashion week can kind of lose for all the functionality and the practicality and the everyday wearing and the everyday wearability of the collections right most fashion week collections for men you see the look, you can wear that entire thing head to toe out on the street right now, right? But part of the reason why I love men's women's fashion, especially couture, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit, in, it's, it's got its head in the clouds, right? It's a bit silly sometimes. Um, it can be a little bit lavish, it can be a little bit dandyish, it can be a little bit extra, right? Of course, women um, probably entertain that more than guys would, right? In terms of the kind of, you know, overly dandyish, um, taking taking a lot of care on what you look like guys tend to have a little bit of scorn against that i'm not sure why but in general guys tend to have a little bit you know of a they have their nose up in the air if people if guys are overly caring about their looks but there's something i like about the um theatrics of paloma spain and the idea of putting men in these dresses especially when it pertains to kind of artists right musicians and stuff because i think in general we don't see enough of that from our big artists for instance most of them just look like us right as great as Adam Levine looks, right, with his top off, he doesn't look any different to any guy you see in Shoreditch, right? He just looks like a dude, right? So, but I miss, I miss seeing artists look like artists, right? Just look nuts, like, whoa, like, their music looks like what they look like, right? Um, or their music sounds like what they look like. Like, for instance, like, um, poor example, but this is kind of the reason why I kind of, you know, uh, like, for instance, like, um, J.W. Anson, right? he looks perfectly normal right like you wouldn't if you saw him walking down the street you have no idea he's like uh you know one of the most important fashion designers on on the on the scene right now right he does great work at Luebe, he does awesome work at his own namesake brand but you'd never guess it looking at him right he just wears like navy navy everything right navy jumpers uh navy jeans um um some white trainers that's it he never even wears the clothes he makes for the most part you don't really see him in stuff he wears which is a bit of a disappointment right whereas you've got someone like a rick owens right and a Michelle Lamy, like looking at them walking down the street um, in Paris somewhere without even realizing who that guy was, you know he does something creative, right? You can just tell it straight away. And sometimes I want my musician to be the same. So I don't know why. That's why when Young Fug came along and he was wearing all the fucking dresses and the crazy clothes and shit, it really warmed my heart that he has somebody that was so thuggish, right? Talking about selling drugs and shooting people in the face and stealing your girl. And he was, you know, painting his nails, wearing pearls, uh, all these silly accoutrements, right? Silly, quote-unquote, in, in a guy's wardrobe and essentially wearing dresses. I thought that was fucking cool and I wish he would have kind of extended that a bit more and did the stage show with it because most of the stuff he did was mostly photo shoots and stuff, but I wish he did like a stage show. Like I think the album of Jeffrey, right? He's got a dress on, but I wish he kind of did an actual tour wearing that sort of stuff. And this stuff from Paloma, Spain is the kind of things I'd like to see some of my artists, especially my hip hop artists wear. to kind of push the envelope a bit and be a little bit more risque, you know? Got dresses with blazers. You've got, again, just, you know, dandyish looking suits that look for, for mine of David Bowie with scarves and gloves you've got loads of like tudorish kind of looking wires to do with it right i think so those kind of frilly sort of collars that you might see in the shakespearean days long coats um you've got stinted belts here lace that like a lace top right that was awesome with little is it holes yeah just like you know actual blouses no people say no people say the piss out of them, the amigos because they wear blouses no this is an actual blouse like for real for real um stuff like this again loads of really wispy kind of clothes of course maybe it would only lend to a certain kind of physique like maybe you know our our most influential kind of hip-hop artists probably couldn't get away with wearing some of this stuff because you know their physiques probably don't lend it to them but i'd love to see some dudes wearing stuff like this a bit more right on stage especially like again just as being an artist like, that's part of the fun isn't it dressing up i would say anyway again what do i know in that respect but I love all of this. I think it looks amazing. I think it looks really, really cool. So Paloma Spain showing at New York Fashion Week for 2019 collection. And the great colours are orange, um, bright oranges on dark skin looks so nice, isn't it? Uh, fluorescent sort of hues. Again, loads of Tudorian kind of looks again. Um, nice poker prints. This look would be, no, for most artists, it would look amazing. you got sort of like a, is that pajama? Are those pajamas, maybe? Is that pajama? Like a pajama, like a silk pajama set, it looks like, by the most part. I think so. 
like a silk pajama set. And I've seen a lot of this kind of accessories actually. The 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 earrings, these massive hooped earrings. I've seen a couple of people doing them in the fashion weeks coming up, or that have passed just lately. There's been a lot of really big hooped earrings. Um, who did the pearl earrings that are kind of sprawling around? It might have been White Project as well. I've seen a lot of kind of big circular hoops coming back. Again, got these like nice silk looking pajamas, uh, slippers. And leather gloves looks amazing. Looks really cool. But yeah, Paloma Spain showing now at New York Fashion Week. You'll find it on Vogue and stuff. But if you want, I'll put that in the show notes you to check out. But yeah, like this this collection looks fucking awesome. This reminds me. Um, is that um uh, this from this look here, look number thirty, kind of reminds me of a Dior Home collection where he had those kind of uh mirrored trousers. Um, I think uh, Hadi Semen did it might be in 2001 and they were kind of silver and I remember someone I forgot what someone from the band wore them at, on on Jules Holland fucking incredible but yeah that could someone from someone from the 1975 could easily wear a look like this right a little bit crazy right again if I was an, if I was a musician this is the kind of things that I'd be wearing personally anyway um, yeah it looks awesome so it wouldn't be imagine like Mickey Blanco wearing this sort of stuff, right? That would make sense, right? Because he's he's already um, he's he he already plays with the lines, right? He blurs uh, the lines between like masculinity and femininity. Cool, that's his position. But let's extend it on and and get Dev Hines into some of this stuff, right? Or get like ASAP Rocky or Playboy Carti. They would look awesome in some of this gear. Louis Zivert, for instance. Um, yeah, so this looks really cool. Paloma Spain. Let's take this off the screen. And then next, uh, Robert Geller doing some great stuff as per usual. Um, I'm seeing a lot of hiking influence here. A lot of nods to maybe like a couple of seasons ago undercover with the with the hoods underneath the woolly hats, a kind of little styling nod. Some of the bandanas on there it looks kind of similar to an undercover collection. Won't say it's copying for that regard because I'm not really sure. But I'll get this up on here on screen so you can check it out. There we go. Let's go back to look one. So you got, yep. Yeah. Again, great details all around for the most part. Loads of gloves, right? You've seen a lot of gloves, especially in Paris as well. Um, loads of gloves implemented people's collections and stuff for autumn, winter, um, which again is probably an easy buy in for customers who want to buy into the brand. And obviously, with the brands themselves, they want to diversify and have different tiers of product that they can shift to our. Um, so they can get our money from our wallets but overall yeah I quite like this Robert Giger get a collection loads of great hiking looks that kind of remind me there was a really good hiking collection you remember that hiking collection that Junior Watanabe did a few seasons back where he did all the great Nikes like, this is from maybe like 2005 or 6 something like that when those um, daybreak Nikes came back in vogue again that was that kind of reminds me of that collection so yeah loads of great little looks I, I love the little um, styling detail with, uh, with it looks like the little hood the little hoods with the bandanas on top of it they look really cool and again tying your shirt like, over your hood over your chest is a staple streetwear move if you look at all the old school boon streetwear street style magazines you'll find loads of kind of um great street style looks with the kind of jumper sleeves wrapped around over your chest sort of like a side saddle bag which look amazing i'm surprised no one's kind of done that with an actual shirt and turned it into a bag because i saw someone i saw a brand i think it might have been pizza or something right doing the same thing with um with a with a croc turn a croc into like a little pouch um, I'm surprised no one's done that with an actual top because it's something that we used to do quite often wrap it around the side but yeah rubber Geller looks amazing again bright fluorescent bright fluorescent colours on black skin looks fucking awesome man this guy in an entirely pink suit um, with sweatpants it looks like, like a sweat it looks like a felt suit looks amazing right with a scarf over the top and great trainers i don't think you could ever go wrong with those kind of colors on black skin it's just you know it's a it's a go-go uh, even this purple top as well looks amazing but yeah by and large very very enjoyable collection from robert geller me likey me likey me likey duh, duh, duh. take that off the screen and then what was next that i saw that i thought was good oh um and and Hollywood, which is an interesting one, right? And Hollywood, a Japan. I've not really looked into why this is, but it's a Japanese brand that I'm very familiar with that always shows in New York. I wonder why that is. Maybe because all the buyers are there. Maybe because most of their accounts are there. Um, I have no idea. But a very popular brand in the Japanese circuit. 
or a very or a brand that's very much known for be coming from Japan because some brands are not like that. Some brands kind of abandon all Japanese tires and go straight to the US, right? I know kind of this is not a good comparison, but I know Lafayette, the kind of brand that used to copy a lot of Supreme shit. Um, they kind of get all of their kind of love from the states nowadays for the most part and um, sponsoring kind of up and coming artists and what what it might be. But anyway, so in Hollywood kind of showed as well. <coughs> Forward to collection here. Get up on screen so you guys can see some good stuff here too. Um loads of nice knits. Um long trench coach, everyone's doing a lot of that. some good casting i think as well changes up a little bit it doesn't it looks very american doesn't it um that's that's a very nice look sort of like a corduroy um overshirt is it corduroy no again it's that weird felty material everyone's kind of using that right i've seen a lot of that in in general uh that same with pleated pants and it looks like are those new balances maybe the new balance yeah yeah new balance collection collaboration i'm assuming so new collaboration new balance is coming up very soon they look quite cool. This guy reminds me a little bit of uh, Dashna, R.I.P. the legend. He's got the same sort of haircut with the long pigtails. Um, great sweats again. Nice bomber jackets. Love the pattern on that jumper and the trousers. That overcoat looks really nice, actually. That's a great, great combination of colors, isn't it? You've got like a pinky salmon on the inside, and then you've got lining, and then you've got gray. That's a really good um, color combo. I didn't think of that like a kind of slate gray with a pink pinky salmon on the inside i quite like that very very nice um continuing on da, 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 da. loads of nice shirts again great detailing just generally you know awesome kind of japanese brand styling oh it looks similar to kind of is that a little bit similar to the balenciaga thing where they had the shirts over the shirts right hanging over so like this is a knit looks really cool though i like i probably prefer what they did here in hollywood oh this damn jacket looks really nice there's something about guys with jackets, isn't it? Why is why am I always drawn to jackets? Like, oh I need a jacket, jacket, jacket. We love jackets. It looks it looks a little bit similar to Greg Lauren, right? It looks kind of like a like a Greg Lauren piece. Maybe it's a Greg Lauren collabo. It's sort of like uh what is like a denim jacket with the with the with the collar cut off and then on the inside it looks like there's a hoodie. So imagine you're wearing a hoodie underneath a denim jacket. They just cut the hood and the collar off this off the denim jacket and the hood, and then you have the kind of hood kind of peeking out and then they stitched it around. Looks fucking interesting. Very very cool. Um, continuing on here, blaze through some of these looks. A whole denim look. Looks a nice denim there. I'm not really a fan of the entire denim look personally. Um, nice olive here. Yeah, in general, great collection, man. In Hollywood, check it out. In Hollywood, four men's. 2019 again i'll link in the show notes for those you want to want to see but yeah loads of great stuff from in hollywood right there ba, 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 ba. okay let's get to the main list and see what's going on here oh mate my allergies are giving me loads of love but i refuse to take anti-allergy tablets because they make me really drowsy and i've got to work all day so the last thing i need is to kind of be you know feeling like i want to sleep on my desk that's not a good idea anyway jumping into it jump 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 into it so number one streetwear stuff right concerning streetwear because that's what we care about here streets the fucking streets right the streets of london the streets of whatever the streets with a z the streets streets graffiti breakdancing streets <laughs> anyway um i've seen this horrible right Look, whoever's at Bape now, whoever's at Bape, whoever's doing the stuff at Bape, whoever's handling Bape since Nigo's departure, since Nigo was fucking kicked out of his brand because he spent too much money making amazing clothes, right? And mishandling his finances, which he should be forgiven for. But whoever's handling Bape now at the moment, they're doing a fucking terrible job, aren't they? I think there was a moment in time where Bape were kind of reissuing all their classic... Um, pieces right all the classic staples that you know and love for bape like all the stuff that i have in my kind of book here right i've got this amazing book that showcases all the old school bape let me check it out see if i've got i can take it out here but loads of the great old school bape pieces right i'm gonna hold up to the screen so you guys can see like shit like that right you see that like classic 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 bape right um what is it this is a this is a an m65 first camera right mk65 first camera stuff like that right a space cycle jacket right silver it's really in now at the moment everyone's wearing these kind of astronaut things right loads of great sweatshirts right look at that nice sweatshirt right there right amazing huh a great bape sweat sweatshirt look at this cycling or bmx kind of 
jersey top that Supreme probably would end up copying. Look at that. Fucking awesome, right? Loads of great stuff. Look at this. Look at the simple striped top they have here that looks amazing. Tons better than anything they're doing now at the moment, right? If anything, if you're probably an old school babe customer, a good kind of substitute might be Kvempt, right? Kvempt. I think they're doing some fucking amazing things. But whoever's handling Babe's creative direction now is doing a piss poor job because the collaboration I've seen with Adidas, the collaboration I've seen with Puma, um, and now we've got this new collaboration with Uggs and Lil Wayne is modeling it. I'm not mad at because Lil Wayne was probably one of the main people that, you know, was kind of pushing Bape forward when it was in the early 2000s when he was wearing those oh, all camo looks. He looks fucking cool as fuck, but you can't tell me anything that they do nowadays will look anything better than that, right? James Lavelle and Nigo in the woods, stunting, wearing all Bape head to toe, right? No garish branding, no stupid stuff everywhere. Just nice clothes, right? Nice clothes made by an absolutely obsessive clothing fan in Nigo, right? So this is the book that I've got that's got the Bible of everything in it. So if you guys at Bape need anything, let me know and I'll send over this archive and you can put back some new stuff because this collection I've seen with Uggs is fucking terrible, man. Um, I know Uga trying to come back. They've done some good stuff. I've seen they've got, got a good mainline collaboration. I saw a massive billboard outside um, Box Park a few months ago. A couple months just before Christmas. That looked amazing. It had some great shoes in there that they were showcasing. I know they've done a collaboration with Heron Preston that looks semi decent. And they're trying to kind of come back and trying to reinvent themselves and try and make, plug themselves back into modern wear. But this collaboration that they've done at the moment, this Ugg and Babe Spring Summer collaboration where that little Wayne is modeling looks fucking bullshit. So here it is, right? It's a lookbook. I'm gonna put up on here. Actually, let me uh, let me minimize this screen a little bit so we can see it and talk at the same time. But Jesus Christ, man! Honestly, some of these brands, you really wonder, right? It would have been just better for for Bape just to die, right? Wouldn't it? I would have just preferred it just to die a slow, natural death. It was one of the brands we all knew and love, and it kind of go as opposed to it carry on um, unnecessarily. So, um, so anyway, here here it is, right? Here's the collection. So this is the lookbook I just saw on Hypebeast today this morning, and I thought, fucking hell. So, um, da -da -da -da. Is, is, is any point reading this Hypebeast or copy? It's gonna be a copy on whatever they they send them in a press release. Um, the imposing camo covered. Um, Mutton coat weighs in at weighs in at an imposing three thousand and five hundred US dollars, while matching mittens are equally possible eight hundred eight hundred eight one hundred eighty three different shirling coats, uh, retail between three fifty and two seventy five. The collection is gonna drop when. Uh, who fucking cares? And stuff in Bape Selfridges. God Almighty. Anyway, so this is the collection, right? You got here Little Wayne, obviously with the with the prayer hands as per usual, standard pose. Uh, Little Wayne, I'm happy for he's come back out of the from the grave, released the Carter Five. He seems like he's got his business in order. He's suing his other lawyer for swindling him out of money. More power to Little Wayne. He deserves everything that's coming his way, right? It's not Little Wayne slander. This is Bape slander. Whoever's doing the Bape direction now is absolutely killing the brand, killing it, killing it, killing it beyond belief. So much so that I'm tempted to buy up all the archive Bape and just wear that as a fucking protest to all the new shit they're putting out at the moment like if you've got that bape and puma stuff burn it if you've got the bape and adidas shoes burn them i don't care how much StockX tells you they're worth they're garbage so here we go right bape and uggs like what is this and they have the guts to use that logo they have the guts to use that logo man they have the guts to use that logo on this fucking trash ass jacket like ah. Oh. Like, why? Why is this happening, right? With obviously Bape on the... They've got these gloves with obviously BA on one and BP and PE on the other side. Like, fucking hell. What is this? And why is Lil Wayne topless? I know he does this all the time in general when he's performing, but why is he topless in his lookbook? Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Huh? Are the, are the chains Bape and Ugg? No. Just a... Are the jeans Bape and Ugg? I don't know. I'm not... I don't think so. Just a... Just the trainers and the tops and all the jacket. Get your money, Lil Wayne. Do your thing. But Jesus Christ. Mittens, of course. You've got slippers there. You've got, I'm assuming, pajama pants and a shirt that I don't know why they're that color or why they're that pattern. I have no idea. Oh, it's just terrible. Just absolutely terrible. And considering the price of what it is, just it's garbage and probably plays a lot into the kind of hype beast kids men buying mentality, right? Where as long as it's limited, as long as it's kind of, you know, um, uh, there's not many retailers that are kind of 
you know, have it for sale, kids are probably going to queue up and buy this crap. But it's absolutely terrible, man. It's so, so terrible. It's just sad to see where Babe is at the moment. I get it, right? Nigo's not there anymore. Probably most of the OG crew that were around when Nigo... Because it felt like when Nigo left, when he got kicked out, or had to kind of sell his company to IT, it did feel a little bit like the kind of seasons after that a few of these kind of the team that were there before were able to kind of hold it down, similar to like uh, Mason Martin Margiela, right? There was a period where just when Margiela left, where they were able to kind of still kind of put out some semi-decent collections after he left. But then, over, of course, over time, the talent designers or people that are involved in the company might have just thought, you know what, it's not worth the hassle. And plus, whenever you get absorbed by another big company, like with startups, right? When Insta when, Insta when Facebook bought Instagram, it was only a matter of time before the, the, the Instagram founders were probably going to leave or get kicked out, right? Um, after a period of time when you get sucked up by the big machine they kind of render your input um, obsolete and of course if this is something that you've made in your fucking garage right if you're a part of Nigo's team the original 10 employees that started that started Bape when it was um, in nowhere alongside with the fucking Jun Takashi, right? The last thing you're going to be wanting to do is taking orders from some um, Chinese-based conglomerate, right? It doesn't make any sense. So, of course, over time, those people probably moved on. They probably went to other places, maybe set up their own brands. Maybe you were laughing away to the bank and enjoying the retirement. So, you're now seeing this BAPE is now being completely operated by IT. Completely operated. Completely. You can see that. There's no way anyone that was involved in the original crew would allow this shit because Lil, Lil Wayne deserves more than this too, right? Like, he deserves more than this. Like, this is garbage beyond garbage. Like, it's just terrible. He's got on boxers that don't look like they're... Like, he's obviously got his brief pulled up a little bit up, 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 over his jeans. They're not even Bape or Ugg. It's just terrible all around. Is the hat he's wearing Bape and Ugg? I don't know. It's just all terrible. All fucking garbage. Completely and utter garbage. Like, what the fuck is this? The gloves, the, the shoes. Like, look at these shoes. Look at them. Look at the shoes. Uggs are already hard to pull off anyway and already kind of terrible shoes, quote unquote. But, you know, if you've got swag and you know what you're doing, you can kind of do them. I saw a guy the other day who kind of looked really cool wearing a, a really old vintage North Face with some like tattered kind of like double RL jeans or bottoms and some old school kind of um, Uggs. They look like, you know, he probably was about this life back in the day. He pulled them off amazing, right? But they're a really particular look. You have to kind of have the source to kind of pull off. There's no way you can pull this off, even with source. They have they have a fucking name. They have a gold name tag on the back of it, a chain. Like they have the Bape logo embossed on the side, even though it's covered with Bape heads. It's just like oh, overload. These chuckers that could look probably quite cool. The chuckers could look great if they just got away with the embossed sign. They've got two logos there. Put them in the same place. You don't need to have them spread out across the entire shoe, right? Oh just absolutely terrible slippers again like why don't you just make a standard slipper that has instead of having it kind of have the embossed kind of the babe star look on it instead of just why yeah the sneak oh jesus christ just all of it all of it's terrible man completely terrible burn it all man burn every single last piece of it and again who are we gonna see wearing this stuff um who's gonna see doing this stuff who's gonna see doing this stuff? who's gonna see doing this stuff we're gonna see we're going to see um, influencers wearing this stuff. We're going to see market marketing people wearing this stuff, right? People that get seeded are going to wear it. No one is actually going to, no one, the amount of people that are actually going to buy this in retail is going to be so slim, so, so slim. It's only going to be people that seeded it. And it's going to give you a false assumption that this shit is actually popping when it isn't. It's not, it's not popping. No one wants to see a uh, Bape and Up Collabor in 2019. We just about want to see Uggs. We just about want to see them. And they're kind of, you know, fucking it up a little bit with the collaborations that they're doing at the moment. But who wants to see that? God damn it. Ugh. Anyway, what do I know? I'm just a young guy in a small city trying to make his way in life. But hey, ho, there we go. Um, next on the docket, um, we have here Stussy Spring Summer 19, which looks fucking banging, going from the shit to the good. Whoever's handling Stussy now needs a clap too. They need a fucking pat on the back. Whoever's kind of handling their creative direction, um, the way they shoot their lookbooks, um, the way they cast the, the, the models they cast, the kind of quote-unquote brand of direction I'm getting a bit, a bit pissed off about. They do quite a lot of parties that no one can kind of go to, which is annoying sometimes. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're going to slowly improve it. They've got a store that looks fucking sick. Um, I haven't been in it, but yeah, I've seen the pictures. It looks really cool. It reminds me of the old school hideout days without all the snotty, um, up your own ass people that used to work there. Um, by and large, just it just seems warm and welcoming, right? Stussy back in the day just seemed a bit culty and clicky. Even when 
Sean Stussy left, right? The people that handled it afterwards, which I'm sure was part of the reason it kind of was popular, the whole Stussy International tribe, but it did seem very clicky, right? It did seem very closed off, but now this Stussy seems very inclusive. It seems like it's involving kids, it's getting some new fresh energy involved. It's, t- it's telling a new story, right? It's not just rehashing old black and white pictures of um, those guys back in the day standing around, standing around on their own wearing jackets with their own name on the back of it. Um, this looks a lot more interesting and this looks fucking bang and whoever's doing it. So I've, I've been in, I've been I've been a fan of everything I've seen online so much and I'm sure other people have been a fan too of Stussy because whenever I go online check some of the pieces that I might want to buy a lot of the stuff that I like is sold out so it, it seems like a lot of people are kind of seeing oh actually you know what Stussy's quite cool and the price point is well on is well on par with everything out at the moment I've seen overcoats for like around 300 pounds I've seen nice track suits for maybe total 180 so it's in the range of all the kind of brands that people know and love now in streetwear but this lookbook looks really amazing um you've got this great little short sleeve here with the with like a is it a whiskey glass motif there looks amazing nice fleece you've got those um cheetah print pants which remind me of the um what was that supreme m65 that came out a few seasons back that goes for like fucking big bucks now there's like i remember that was, there was that supreme m65 i forgot what it was called Ugh. anyway it reminds me of that it looks really nice um nice fleece Da-da-da. let's continue on with the lookbook great tops here nice zip flannels they do a lot of those really nice kind of shadow flannel kind of jackets they do quite a lot of well like the zip ones i've done a few last season that i was a big fan of nice pants good patterns great styling like this look i'd look i'd wear in the i'd wear in a heartbeat i wear this look in a heartbeat right a half zip a half zips fleece um some great shorts some socks some white socks to pulled up to your calves and some um, low top sneakers like you could wear that all day long right um easily to be worn great jackets they're sort of like carpenter kind of uh pant and jacket combo they're doing a few it's been an really cool i really wanted that fucking um dover street and stussy kind of collabo do you see a work jacket that i think uh, fraser cook must have put on his instagram the other day it looks so nice man so fucking nice but okay and i think it's a limited edition piece um again just like great little pieces like you know this polo top or this kind of short sleeve top with the collar looks amazing uh nice shirts again here um great long sleeve tops great another nice long sleeve tops great track pants again nice tops there great great kind of i'm gonna say chore jacket look looks really really fucking nice i love that logo that they're using now at the moment or the kind of you know the old school kind of shoes to see uh script the kind of hand style that he does on most stuff i'm liking that they put in that on most of the things the old school kind of logo that guy looks a little bit like oh, who's the who's the taro lebon kid and that's involved in it. it looks a little bit similar to that again great um workwear vest thing that all the kids like wearing at the moment and again just like all the little great stuff like this 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 whole camo look is just me all day long wear that in a fucking heartbeat but yeah, Stussy, Spring Summer 2019 is amazing. Whoever's sorting it out, all the design and creative direction of this is fucking smashing and doing a really good job. So you deserve a pat on the back and a raise, whoever you are, he or she. You're doing a good job. Continue doing what you're doing. ba 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 What's his next here? Uh, Louis Vuitton Pre-4. Talk about that. To Louis Vuitton Pre-4 collection. Of course, when you're Virgil and you're... A charge of a big luxury house and you have to put out collections unfortunately part of the remit is also to put out pre fours resort collections his workload is insane isn't it think about it right off-white men women uh resort pre four uh louis vuitton men's resort pre four and then all the other stuff on the side it's like insane he's going to be a case study for uh people to come when they really talk about multitasking and being hyper pollinate hyper hyper pollinates polymath renaissance people like he's gonna need to be a case study because this output is just insane and again because because if, if you give a shit about the clothes that you're making you're obviously going to be because it's not like he's just like a it's not like he's like um not, not to say it's a bad thing bad comparison but it's not like he's carl lagerfeld right where he's just like sketching something and handing it over to somebody and then kind of like you know dealing with a final product when it comes to him and then making other alterations right like you know god bless those people that work in that in that atelier right they have to kind of make it and then have him kind of say oh this looks like a dog's ass right or throw out the window he's really involved right so you know he's kind of probably choosing or picking the photographers uh choosing the kind of theme behind it all that sort of stuff it's insane really to think about the fucking workload that he, he takes on but 
I think he loves it, which is great. So they've got here a uh, pre-fall collection of Louis Vuitton men's. Again, kind of the same sort of um, styles we've seen in the collection past, maybe for the most part, extending on for it. This probably looks a lot more similar to what you might see Virgil do at Off-White, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a little bit less... Uh, I wouldn't say rigid, but you know, Louis, Louis Vuitton's probably his most. You know, you know, you know what Louis Vuitton is. Louis Vuitton is um, under Virgil is like um, when you uh, when you meet your pet, when you meet your your partner's parents for the first time, right? You set a good example, and you always keep setting that good example. If you went, if you met them up wearing really clean. I don't know, shoes or an outfit, right? You've got a bit dressed up. You'll keep doing that continually because you won't want to give them a bad impression. You don't want to you don't want to give them an impression that you got to take your foot off the pedal. So this is what he, it looks like to me. Vir Virgil's Louis Vuitton is like his best impression, right? He's got he's trying to like clean up, right? Um and it looks pretty cool to be honest, this pre-four collection. Um loads of pieces I'm sure people are be gonna be a big fan of wearing. Um I'm liking all the hats. Supposedly the hats were inspired by the one and only Jamira Kwai. This obviously look here on the right looks, you know quote unquote right out of Jamiro Choir's kind of playbook um, even from the really wide uh, bell bottoms at the bottom of the pants again loads of slits he's really continuing a little bit of those codes and slits he's got Dev Hines modelling uh, stuff too and yeah by and large it looks very cool I'm sure people will like it I like that kind of old school um, that uh, pattern look here on the left that looks very interesting um, great use of colour again Dif are the sneakers different? yep look a little bit different right here Oh, interesting. It's, it's, a, it's a different model of shoe. I like that. I like, look at that. It might be modular as well with a little orange bit on there on the top. That looks very, very cool. And yeah, um, interesting to see what that does in terms of how they're going to drop this when it comes to the shop stores and stuff. Because not all the things are available online still, are they? Um, the collection. I think they're doing it in like drops in terms of like streetwear drops, like certain different, different pieces. Yeah, batches of stuff that's on the runway are dropping bit by bit. And then I'm assuming they're going to carry on doing the pop-up shops, which they've kind of done in London and one in New York that just passed. So this might continue on. Maybe we won't see one in Paris. But again, these like Jamiro quite look, look fucking awesome, innit, with the massive hats. <laughs> um, yeah, so loads of, loads of cool stuff, really, at the end of the day. I think he did. I think he's doing a good job. He's obviously growing into the role. And we're now we're seeing the fruits of it. This look here on the left looks awesome. That half step there is just great, isn't it? Would wear that in a heartbeat. Probably minus the trainers are. The trains look like they're on the wrong way around, aren't they? A little bit weird, but hey. Um, oh, I like the I like the shoes here, actually. It does look really nice. But yeah, by and large, a good collection by Virgil at Louis Vuitton uh, pre-4. So he's got his work cut out these next few seasons. Gonna It's like, what, six collections a year? Is it six? No, three? Is it four? Is it four collections a year? I think it's four collections a year. It's, it's a workload and a half on top of everything else he does. So yeah. That looks pretty cool. What else is on the list here? Um, we have the Rimowa retail store opening in Japan. And I put a note on there. Why? <laughs> um, yeah, true, right? Um, I think as great as it's been, uh, it's, it's interesting, right? Um, Rimowa lately has kind of come back into ups, into kind of um, the cultural conversation or the scene conversation. Kids now want to get Rimowa. I don't think Supreme probably did as much for that as probably Ramoa did in terms of kind of steering the direction more towards collaborations. They've done obviously one with Off-White. They've done one with obviously Ambush with Yoon over there. A few others. I think they've done a Montclair one, which um, I didn't see really pick up any traction. But it looks like they're trying to appeal. They're trying to take all these kind of staple names in industry or brands, align themselves with them and give them a bag and hoping that the customer that buys those brands will then buy into Ramoa. But I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue with Ramoa is that I don't think, by and large, the idea of uh, buying an expensive piece of luggage that's going to last you a lifetime, because they are, right? Remote luggage is like buying yourself a Rolex, right? Um, it's like buying yourself, um, I don't know, name a bag. Um, they're going to, or like a George Cox shoes, right? They're going to last you, you know, until the end of time. You can just resold, the resold, resold them, you can tweak the lever, and they're going to last you a really long time. But I just don't think kids, especially the hype these kids are kind of trying to appeal to, because um, essentially I'm assuming that's who you're gonna, your target market is. I don't think they quite associate, I don't think they put any value in maybe travel, number one. Yeah, because a lot of those kids who queue up outside of Supreme and all that sort of stuff or resell stuff or the kids that are always living on the internet or leaving people comments, they don't really go anywhere um for the most part they stay where they stay um they don't travel to places if they do you know it's just to kind of the same old festivals and stuff um they don't really 
explore or like they don't really do jobs that call for traveling they, they might aspire to it but i don't necessarily think they actually hold into it in a high enough esteem which is interesting because in the influencer space in the space that you know the kind of fitness models and kind of style model girl kind of people um occupy they do promote this like health wellness kind of like you know exploration uh going outside your boundaries kind of approach to life so if you saw like an alili may doing a collaboration with Moa, she's most likely to she's more likely to sell them she's more she's more likely to sell more than yoon from ambush i would say in my opinion i just think the you know there's probably more dudes following yoon from ambush anyway um i'd assume again this is just from the outside looking in and I'd say maybe a Lily May probably has more girls that are in, that are like streetwear or like fashion or they like being a creative or they want to be their own or they want to be a consultant or they want to have their own agency. So I think maybe the positioning is a bit off and they're not very really aligning it probably with the right per people. I'm again, just me talking from the outside. I don't know jack shit. I'm just kind of shooting the shit. But I just think maybe Ramo have kind of messed up in terms of who they're aligning themselves with. Um, but. With that being said, they decided to open a new store in Tokyo. When did it open? It's a 544 square space. Um, da, 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 da. Obviously, they're in collaboration with Takeshi Murakama, Hiroshi Fujiwara, Yuen and Verbal from Ambush. Blah, 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 blah. Um, e even, even Hiroshi, I'm not sure how many suitcases Hiroshi can actually shift. Because again, these kids are young, innit? They've got new icons that are coming up. So you, you have to kind of align yourself with the icons that they've got, like as bad as bad as he as his public image might be like a Ramoa and Ian Connor suitcase probably would sell better than um the other ones that they've kind of mentioned Ramoa and uh, Lily May would probably sell better people that are actually traveling and going places like Bari um I don't know Theophilus London maybe for the most part like people that are actually you know there's the other guy who's got a creative director um even someone like a Benjamin Edgar from uh the brilliant the brilliance fame and who does a uh, box water I think he'd be a great collaborator for Remo. I think they'll do a really good job. So I think it's you have to really kind of be careful of who you align yourself with because I don't think necessarily just going for the brands that are the best, that are like kind of top rated within the streetwear or the, you know, the, the men's fashion arena is going to then equal kind of sales. I don't think you could do that. You have to kind of position it with people who actually travel, who are into exploration, who would kind of, va who kind of will be able to sell the idea of valuing um, really expensive luggage is going to last you a long time, actually really high on the list. But that being said, the store itself looks very, very beautiful as per most um, Japanese um, retail stores. I'm not sure what the, who, what the, uh, what architecture firm designed it. Um, but it looks very, very nice. It's based in Ginza. Um, it looks fucking amazing. Very, very beautiful space. Um, big fan of the overall interior design of the space. Looks fucking cool. And they've got a lot of competition in Romero now, right? You've got that away luggage company that are doing that are doing bits. You've got the other one as well. I forgot the name of. Um, there's a lot of brands coming up that are kind of occupying that middle ground. But I'm not, again, I'm not too sure if the price is the problem. I just think it's the translating of the, you know, like why this matters and who's kind of like telling you to, who's kind of trying to tell you to buy the luggage. I don't necessarily think the lug the price of it matters. I think as seen with the Supreme stuff, right? That's sold out in minutes. Of course, most of it's because of resellers. But, you know, I don't think it's necessarily the price is affecting this more so who they're lining themselves with. I don't necessarily think you and Ambush and all those kind of people are going to result in sales as much as an Alili May would or other people would. Again, just my opinion. Um, I don't really know what I'm talking about. But yeah, that looks pretty cool. A new retail store from Ramoa. <laughs> what else is on the list here? Supposedly there's new Frank Ocean, but we've now been told it's not true. That's a fucking bummer. Uh, I saw the news put out a while. Well, just this this morning or the other day? The other day? Yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Yes, there's some mysterious. Let me get it up here. Where is it? Did I put it up on there or did I take it off? I think a mysterious little. Doesn't really matter now because it's not true. It's a hoax. But a mysterious kind of update came up on his Tumblr, something along the lines of like, you know, he might be putting out two albums this year, another album in New Year. There was supposed to be a collaboration with uh, Scissor, Ken uh, Kendrick Lamar, and Andre 3000, supposed to be on the horizon. But that's not happening, of course. But that being said, I have been listening back to uh, Endless. Um, and yeah, man, fucking great album, innit? Um, I managed to dig through my iTunes and I have two, I have the version that was streamed, that was just the one um, kind of track, I also have the version that kind of split into tracks, which I'm sure they're bootlegs, but yeah, I didn't really buy, I didn't, I, I, I actually, no I was going, I didn't go to get the magazine when that dropped, I was annoyed by it, but I was annoyed by not getting the VHS and the vinyl of Endless, because it's a fucking good album, isn't it? Um, very cinematic, you know people always say that, oh, you know some people say, oh, I designed my music uh, and I I have it um, I think about it like a musical score this actually sounds like a musical score endless, it's fucking beautiful 
really good music um and again it kind of occupies a space i think by and large i think um what how frank ocean came in with nostalgia ultra and channel orange i think people kind of try to pigeonhole him as like a conventional r&b or like not uh, non-conventional r&b but i think he's even eclipsed that whatever that kind of um field is i think party next door was able to kind of fulfill that mo- that kind of need for the most part when he came about and it seemed like frank ocean definitely tried to pivot away from it when the likes of tory lanes came about doing their thing and he kind of now is just like you know on another plane in field and if anything if you would have told me when he released Nostalgia Ultra that Frank Ocean is going to be more similar to James Blake than he is going to be to Chris Brown, I would have never, I would have never believed you. But now he is. He occupies that James Blake um, um, musical genreless sphere, right? I don't really know what music James Blake makes, but whatever he makes, it's fucking awesome, and I love it. Same with um, Frank Ocean, like, and he, and it seems like it seems like even though he doesn't drop as much music as he probably can or should, or as fans expect it. I think he works like future. I think he's just able to, he's got a talent of being able to kind of turn over or complete things. Whether or not you like it or not, you think it's good. It's another thing. Future's the same sort of thing. But I think future has that talent where he can complete a project, complete a song, complete a track very quickly. He can get his ideas out, like ideas, because I'm assuming that as most points of creativity, um, even the things that I'm doing, the hardest thing is being able to get, to get, um, to get what's in your head on paper. And then to get it into a physical form, that's the hardest part, right? That's why you see all these kind of designers and graphic designers online um, sharing pictures of line sheets of things that they could have made or should have made, right? And it just always fucking annoys me, that thing anyway, of these lines. Oh, this show I've made. No, 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 no. Make it or don't show it, right? It's not show and prove economy, right? We're a shipping economy. And that's the hardest thing to do because obviously once you kind of make it, you're then kind of immediately up for criticism, right? You're immediately putting yourselves up, up for... Um, inviting the court of public opinion which i'm sure a lot of artists can kind of probably do without but i think frank ocean's got the talent of being able to churn out so much stuff that he's able to do uh an endless and then drop a blonded after like and that and they have they have a bit of a correlation but in general like musically they don't sound anything alike right it's fucking insane how he did it from the filming of the staircase and the music playing in the background just amazing 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 and he could have easily just turned that project in endless right he could easily just fobbed it off because essentially that project was part of a longer term plan to kind of finesse himself out of the record label which everyone's kind of very aware of he could have easily just turned in a fucking dud and just be done about many artists have done the same sort of thing but instead he tried to use that as a an example to say look middle finger to his label um and also look here's how here's what you're missing out on this this is this is my level of talent and now we have what we have now. So, and unfortunately, that news was is was fake news. It's not true. I think um, Frank Ocean debunked it on his own Instagram. So we we'll have to wait and see whether or not we're gonna get any new stuff from Frank in the upcoming days. Um, what else? Uh, oh, there's a good little interview I saw here with a guy called Bru Bru Amadu, who's a graphic designer and an artist who's kind of done loads of great album covers that we all know and love. I've only kind of found out about who he is in the last few years or whatever. Um, and he kind of, well, not last, last few years, um, not from last year, actually. I kind of started following him on social. He's always kind of following some nice little tidbits. And he's got this great interview on the Creative Independent, which I recommend you check out. It doesn't matter if you're not creative or you're not involved in the industry, whatever it may be. Check it out in general, just in terms of good words of advice. And they've done a really cool thing as well on this website too, where they kind of highlight some of the key bits that you kind of would want to read, which is quite a nice little feature on the website. He kind of speaks about um, his, you know, influences and how he's come up on the scene and, you know, the struggles and pitfalls of his life. Um, the top, the article is titled On Throwing What You've Learned Out the Window. Graphic designer Braril- Braulio Amado reflects on his beginnings as a designer, what he learned from working in different studios and the value of taking ownership of your own career and a creative output. But the bit that really stood out to me is a bit here at the bottom. Again, there's loads of highlight bits as you can see here that kind of, you know, show you the bits that you can maybe uh, take some lessons from. And obviously a great fucking art pieces that he does of graphic design. So, you know, um, there's a bit here at the bottom that I really kind of resonated with me. It's this bit here. Um, what advice do you, do you have for young artists? And he says the following. If you want to do something, don't wait for someone to ask you to, to, to do it. Get off your phone and meet people. Get a full-time job you don't hate. Do your own art on the side. Save money. And when you have enough saved, invest it into creating something you like and believe in. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. I have no idea what I'm doing either. Fucking awesome advice, right? And something we probably, you know, for the most part, if you're involved in the creative industry, you know it's not nothing new. 
He's not saying anything groundbreaking. He's not blowing your mind. He's not dropping jewels or gems on you. This is stuff that you know deep down. But, you know, nowadays with the amount of distractions we have around us, with the fact that you can access so many, you have access, access with your phone to so many kind of high um, level um, influential artists and designers, it makes you feel as if like you're on the same playing field when you're not and you then you start comparing and, you know, we all know that any, um, uh, comparison is the enemy of faith or whatever you call it, as the enemy of joy, sorry, as Theodore Roosevelt once said. Um, we know that it's not good for you, right? But we're in this kind of situation that we're in now and sometimes you try to do the most or other things in order to kind of get yourself where you need to get to. But by and large, this method of... Uh, sticking to what you want to do like sticking to your guns uh doing the things that you want to do without asking permission because we don't live in the uh gatekeeper uh land anymore right you don't need someone to bring you in you don't need a cosign you don't need to work for this design studio or to have this brand as an as a as a client in order to kind of get a look right just do the work you love continually um and then you can also work a full-time job like you mentioned here of preferably not a job that you hate to make some money and then as soon as you save that money enough you can then take that money invest it into your brand invest it into your agency invest it into your designs and then kind of go on that kind of really scary mission of trying to make it on your own and that's the part i think people really don't do and that's something that i haven't done too in the past i, me I remember hearing uh, sammy ross say the same sort of thing about how he invested in himself right how like most of the kind of ups up um the kind of startup money that they used to fund the cold war was mostly this money that they kind of pulled together as friends they didn't get any loans or anything from outside outside and he said that that was the scariest part right saving up a big chunk of money imagine if you're really diligent right and you don't go out you don't um splurge on nonsense things you save a big amount of money and every, any money you do have left over you're kind of reinvesting into your work and you're trying to put yourself out there you're trying to do stuff for free for people to get your name out there you're really hustling you're doing the whole gary v thing where you're working your nine to five and you're coming home and working on your side hustle from seven to one you're doing that day in day out it can be quite scary to then when you finally got the amount of money that you need to save to kind of you know get going and do your own thing to take that 10 grand take that five grand whatever it is 20 grand and then kind of start up shop with your own thing because you know that's you know because you've quit your job now you've quit your job you handed your resignation you told everyone about your dream so you've got that, that accountability thing right you've told everyone oh look i'm gonna go i'm gonna go to the outside to the cold outside and do my own thing and usually in nine to five jobs everyone's happy for you because you know secretly those people in that nine to five job want to do that as well so they're kind of rooting for you then you've got the people that are not rooting for you and you feel that pressure on your on the back of your shoulders so to go out in the cold and to finally think okay i'm gonna invest all my money all the thing all everything i say every penny especially if you've got a family or you're living with your partner it's fucking scary but that is the only way to do it the alternative doesn't exist right the alternative is what um luck is trying to luck out and work for a design studio that's fucking amazing has core directors core partners core employees people that you can work with and you feel like the job isn't a job and you feel empowered that is a needle in a haystack right it doesn't exist for the most part if you want a cool place to work for and you have ideas that matter and you feel like your voice is missing more likely than not you're going to want to do it yourself you're not going to want to do it underneath anybody because they're not going to give you the room to do it the way you want to do it because again it's not your thing that's understandable but that's the most scariest part that no one really does like that taking that step and i think him just saying, you know, some tried and true meth, some tried and true pieces of advice, and you know, saying the quote unquote cliche thing is very. I was, I was happy that I read that, cliche or not, because I think sometimes the cliche advice is the best advice. It's the advice that we don't take because nowadays, you know, I'm sure he gets asked, "Oh, how do you promote yourself on Instagram? Do you do ads? Do you do this? Blah, 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 right?" And that's not really the game that you're meant to be playing. It's not really about the strategies and when you post, do you post at midnight or do you upload on this day? It's not really about that. It's about doing the work every single day. It's about showing up every single day. It's about putting your mouth where you, it's about putting your money where your mouth is, right? And investing in yourself as Dame Dash says, like taking that money that you saved up for six months and putting it all into starting your little brand, into all, into making your album, into all starting uh, your own agency. It takes a lot of balls, but that's the only way you're going to get forward in life. And again, it might fail, but even if it does fail, you have the best story to tell later on, right? Oh, do you remember that time I tried to start my own studio and it fucked up? Cool, no worries. And you can get a job anywhere. You can get a job anytime. Jobs are 10, 10 a dozen. And imagine you go back into the working space and you've had six months of starting your own studio. You're, you're at a much different pay bracket anyway. So it's always a win-win. 
again, I'm saying this only for, you know, those that care and for myself, really, to be honest, because sometimes I get stuck in that rut where you kind of think, oh, man, fuck, man, I want to do something else. And then you realize, you know what, fuck, you know why you do something else? Because I haven't done that something else. I haven't taken that step forward. It's l- less about people. It's more so about yourself. And again, invest in yourself, invest in yourself. And again, that's great advice from uh, Bruno. Um, I recommend you check it out. It's a great uh, Bra- Braulio. Sorry, not Bruno. Braulio. Braulio. Uh, recommend. I shouldn't really know how to pronounce his name because he's Portuguese. But, you know, my fucking Portuguese is like nothing I've heard before. But, yeah, great advice from Braulio. Um, the interview is called, like I said, uh, Song Creative Independent. But I'll link it on the show notes so you guys can check it out. Um, I'm throwing what you've learned out of the window. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, um, that's an hour and 10 minutes, right? So it's probably a good time to cap it all off and go from there. Thank you so much for tuning in to Exodus English Show episode number 155. It's been a pleasure to have the company of your ears. As always, um, I'm going to be DJing this weekend. Oh, actually, change of plan for DJing. I'm DJing on Friday, still in Dawson at the Free Compasses for my night called Bump. So come down there and check that out. Uh, link can be found on my website actionazinga.com and also on saturday i'm djing at latent star no more endorsing anymore now i've switched and now i'm going to be djing at latent star so if you're in the if you're in the latent area and you want to see me play come to latent star from 9 to 1 a.m on saturday the 10th of february i think it's the 10th right is that the 10th saturday's the 10th right is it the 10th yeah, no, Saturday the 9th of November of, of February and then the 8th, which is on Friday, I'm in Dawson. But until then, see you again soon. Peace.